Hello. In this video, we're going to take a look at how easy it can be to create financial independence for ourselves, which allows us to have much more freedom and control over our own life. Before we get into specific examples of how easy this can be done, we do want to understand how investments grow over a period of time. Now, for our calculations today, we will be using a 10% compounded annual growth rate. Because remember, in an earlier video, we compared lots of different types of investments. And we learned that the S&P 500, with the dividends that those companies pay over a long period of time, like a 20, 30, 40 year period, has always averaged a 10% compounded annual growth rate. So that's what we'll be using because that's how we want to invest. Now, this is an example of how a $1,000 deposit could grow over time. What we're seeing here is that by about the year 46, so 46 years later, a $1,000 deposit could grow into about $80,000. That's the power of time. That's the power of compounding. Think of this as a young person. Maybe we're buying our first car. We have the choice of buying a $20,000 car or a $15,000 car. What if we went with the $15,000 car and took that extra $5,000 and invested it like this? That can make a difference of $400,000 in retirement. Okay, so small choices we make when we're young can really impact our future. Now, let's take a look at somebody starting out at the age of 20 that just saved $5 a day every single day and invested it at the end of each month into the S&P 500. So they never increase that throughout their life. They just continue to save $5 a day. They would only really contribute about $87,000 of their own money over that period of time by the time they got to age 68, maybe that's the retirement age. And yet it would have grown into about $2.1 million. So again, this is the power of starting early in life. We wouldn't really have to save that much to reach a nice figure there if we start early enough. Now, what if we started working at the age of 22 and we had a $40,000 a year salary we had a 2% pay increase every year, and we're going to work until the age of 67. So that's a 45-year working career. What if we started saving 10% of our salary? Well, if we started saving 10% from day one at the age of 22, over our working career, we would have only saved about $287,000 of our own money. And yet it would grow into $4.2 million approximately. Okay. So notice your entire lifetime earnings was only about $2.8 million. So just saving 10% of your salary grew into $4.2 million, and over that period of time, you only earned $2.8 million. Now, what if we waited to the age of 30 to get started, though? Now, we would still have to save approximately $253,000 of our own money at that 10% rate, but notice waiting those eight years cost us over two million dollars in retirement. Okay, so we want to start as early as possible. If we waited to the age of 40 and saved 10% of our salary, we would only have about 900,000. So if we wait, then we have to save more to reach certain targets. Another way we could look at this is, let's say we wanted to reach the two and a half million dollar mark. Again, this is an example of saving 10% of our salary, we start with a $40,000 a year salary at age 22, 2% pay increase every year, and we're going to retire at age 67. So if we would start saving at age 22 when we first started this job, we would only have to save about 5.85% of our salary to hit the $2.5 million mark. Over that period of time, we would have saved approximately $168,000 of our own money. If we waited to the age of 30, though, eight more years, now we've got to save about $288,000 of our own money to hit that mark, or about 11.4% of our entire salary going forward. If we waited just five more years, now we've got to save close to $400,000 of our own money, or approximately 17.4% of our salary from that point forward. So you can see waiting really forces us to save a great deal more money. Another way we could look at this is, let's say we still want to reach that $2.5 million mark. Here we're just going to keep our monthly deposit consistent all the way through. If we would start at the age of 20, we would only have to save about $196 a month 
to reach the two and a half million dollar mark. If we waited to the age of 30 though, now we got to save $537 a month to hit that. If we wait to the age of 40, we got to save $1,520 a month. And if we waited to the age of 50 to start thinking about retirement, now we'd have to start saving about $4,700 a month to try and hit that two and a half million dollar mark. Okay, so um, when we start really makes a difference. Now, I want to talk about fees because we don't want to have any unnecessary fees. We know that the S&P 500 with the dividends that those companies pay over a long period of time averages about a 10% compounded annual growth rate. You can buy that through a low cost index fund on your own and really not have any management fees whatsoever. Okay, so let's take a look at, again, a person starting at age 22 with a $40,000 a year salary, 2% pay increase, and retiring at age 67. And this time they're just going to save 8% of their salary all the way through. They could have had $3.4 million dollars they would have saved about $230,000 of their own money. That's what they would have if they were earning that 10%. But what if they paid a 2% management fee? That really doesn't sound like much, but that's incredibly high. Okay, because notice paying a 2% fee rather than earning the 10%, now we're only gonna be earning 8%. And notice that took about half of what you could have had. Rather than having approximately 3.4 million, you have about 1.7, 1.8 million. So a 2% fee, again, doesn't sound like that much, but it's incredibly high. And we wanna be very, very careful if anybody is trying to tell us that they can consistently beat the market or those fees are really worth it. Because there's research done every year, it's called a SPIVA report. It stands for the S&P Index versus Actively Managed Mutual Funds. And what it shows is that it's really, really difficult just to beat the market. So what we're going to look at here is the most recent report that we have as I make this video. It goes up through uh, June of 2019. And we're going to take a look at the last 15 years because notice we're investing over a long period of time. We shouldn't really be too concerned about what a mutual fund or any fund really does in the last year or three or five years. We want to know what something can consistently do over a long period of time at a compounded annual growth rate. And what we see here is regardless of what kind of domestic funds, these are all different kinds of categories of domestic actively managed mutual funds. And if we compare them against just a low cost index fund, which you can buy without any management fees, what we see here is approximately 90% of all actively managed mutual funds underperform their S&P benchmarks. So think about that. You could just buy a low cost index fund, not be paying a manager, and you're already better than about 90% of all professionals over a long period of time. Okay. So that's the reason why this is the same advice Warren Buffett gives to individual investors that you're much better off just buying a low cost index fund and avoiding all of those management fees. Now, in summary, we wanna start early. The earlier the better. We saw how important it is to start early. If you didn't get started young in life, then start now. The sooner we can start, the better. If you are offered a um, retirement plan through your employer, like a 401k, you certainly wanna participate in that up to what they match. So let's say your company matches 5%, you certainly want to put in 5% to get that full match. Essentially, you're doubling your money the very first day. Now, retirement plans through your employer typically kind of have high fees, but because you're doubling your money the first day, it's a very good deal. So you certainly want to do that. But because of those fees, you typically don't want to put in more than the match. If you can invest more than that, then you want to set up an individual retirement account or just do it through a personal account and buy a low cost index fund for the S&P 500. So again, if you are offered a 401k, participate in that certainly up to the match. Now, if you set up a individual re retirement account, you want to do the Roth IRA account if that's available. So a Roth IRA, that entire lump sum at the end is income tax free. 
So that's a huge benefit. And there's probably a pretty good choice that in the future income taxes may be higher than they are today. So we certainly want to do the Roth if we qualify. Now, the Roth is such a good deal that it's not available to high income earners. So you want to check those limits. But if you do qualify, do the Roth IRA. If you don't qualify for the Roth, you can do the traditional IRA still. Now, those have limits you can only put in currently right now in 2020. You can only put in $6,000 a year if you're under 50 and an extra thousand, so $7,000 a year if you're over 50. But you can't put in more than that in any given year. Okay. If you, if you want to put in more than that, you can still set up a personal account and still invest in a low-cost index fund. We want to use an online discount broker because, remember, then we have the ability by low-cost index funds, passively managed funds that don't have a bunch of management fees. And therefore, we will we can buy an ETF, electronic traded fund. We can just use the S&P 500. We want to buy passive index funds. Don't worry about market volatility. Remember when the market goes through a bad period, let's say the housing crisis of 2007, 2008. If you're a long-term investor and you're just saving every month and, and investing into the stock market, those are really an opportunity for you. It, it gives you an opportunity, at least for a while, to buy the market when it's, when it's on sale. And over the long period of time, that actually helps you. So think of those periods of an, as an opportunity and try not to get emotional or stressed about that. We don't want to use our retirement account as a piggy bank. It gets rather tempting. At some point, there's going to be a kind of a lump sum of money sitting there, and it's kind of tempting to kind of pull that out and buy something we would like to have. But remember, time is the most important thing. We want to make sure we make it to that steep part of the graph that we looked at. And if we pull money out, we kind of start that timeline over. So you need to view your retirement accounts as off limits. Remember, that's your security for your future self. That's going to be your freedom and control over your life later on. So try never to take money out of your retirement accounts for any reason. And then, of course, pay yourself first. What that means is we don't want to go through each month and think, well, I'll see what I have left at the end of the month, and then I'll save that. Because if that's our attitude, we'll really probably never do this. So it has to be your first priority. It has to be your number one habit. So you should really automate that. It has to be the first thing that comes out of your account every single month. Try and automate it so it just automatically goes into your brokerage account and then you can invest it into a low cost index fund for the S&P 500. If you do these things, I think you'll be very happy you did later on in life. Um, and I hope this uh, video was helpful and I'll see you next time.